Now, one of the features of the home computers from the home computer revolution from the 1980s and the early 1990s was that the operating system was often stored on a ROM. ROM, read-only memory, so a chip inside of the computer on the motherboard that contained the operating system and it was read-only. It wasn't dynamic, couldn't change anything. You could just upload into the memory the operating system from that chip. Now, that had great advantages in the sense that no matter what you did to your PC, which often in a home market, that's, you know, people do all kinds of crazy things. If you switched it off and then switched it back on again, you'd be booted up to a very much known condition because it would boot up from the ROM. And then, of course, you could load whatever programs or write whatever programs you wanted from that starting point. Now, of course, the disadvantages are that you couldn't update that very easily. There was patching, but you couldn't just kind of replace the ROM. Well, that's not the kind of thing you would do in a, you know, a normal person would do at home. Now, of course, today we use a very different structure. We boot the operating system from internal storage, hard drive, SSD, and so on. Now, that has the great advantage that it, you can change it, you can upgrade it, you can get a new version, it's all very easy. But the disadvantage is that if somehow it becomes corrupted, if somehow something goes wrong with it, then your system no longer boots and you're stuck and your data's on there and you had your whole setup on there and you're kind of like, oh no, it's gone, you know, it just won't boot up anymore, what do I do? So in this video, I want to talk about versions of uh, Linux distros that are called immutable. In other words, they can't change. So kind of taking the best of both worlds, the best of this idea of a ROM based operating system, but still allowing you to install apps and to update the operating system and things like that. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. OK, so how can the OS on the internal storage become corrupted? Well, if there's a hardware problem, uh, you know, physically something wrong with a device, with a controller, with a cable, whatever, then the files can become corrupted. And building a truly redundant system, even for boot, uh, is quite complex and it really isn't necessary for a home computer. That might be for uh, mission critical services, of course. So the OS can be also become corrupted due to software errors or configuration errors. So, uh, you know, uh, something in the software causes a file to be deleted. Uh, you try to change the configuration that messed up the configuration, that kind of thing. Now that can happen because you have also have a bad OS update and there have been lots of different examples through history where an update has come out for a computer home operating system, whether that's Windows or Linux or Mac OS, and it actually uh, makes bad things happen actually reverts to worse behavior uh, files can be deleted either by mistake or with some kind of uh, error in some kind of piece of software that deleted the wrong files and then of course bad configuration you change your configuration file something it goes wrong that configuration file is no longer valid when it tries to boot up it says i can't load this thing uh, I, I have to stop loading up the operating system so what is an immutable Linux distro? An immutable Linux distro is a Linux system designed with a read-only core. And that brings us back to the idea of ROMs, read-only memory, that can't be changed during normal operation. Unlike traditional Linux distros where the system files can be modified if you have administration privileges, immutable distros prevent changes to the core operating system because they are read only. In other words, the base system exists in a read only form and cannot be modified or deleted even if you do have root administrative uh, privileges. So what are the core characteristics? As I said, this read only core system, the base system cannot be modified. Containerization applications typically run in some kind of sandbox, isolated from the core system and from each other. So if you have installed something, it runs independently and no matter how badly that thing gets messed up, it's not gonna mess up the rest of the system. Uh, and also atomic updates, rather than updating individual system packages, so you're updating something, which means you're changing something in the root file system, in the core file system, uh, with atomic updates, the whole operating system is replaced in one single update. So similar to what you might get, let's say, on a smartphone or a tablet, where it says I'm just installing a new uh, version of the firmware and it kind of just blasts that on there. And the way it does that often is using this AB system partition. So that in fact, there are two system partitions. 
one with the current system partition on it and one with the previous one. And if at any point an update fails, you've still got the previous one before the update was applied. And that gives you then some kind of rollback capability. If something goes wrong with an update, the entire system can be reverted to its previous state, which means you're gonna be able to boot up again and then find out why the update went wrong, wait for the new update to come out that fix whatever problem it was, but your system is still usable. Okay, so there you go. That's my overview of immutable Linux distros. Now this really is the first in maybe two, three videos. In the next video for sure, I want to show you an actual immutable uh, distro of Linux, how to install it, and then we're gonna try and break it. We're gonna try and, you know, do some horrible things to it and see whether we can actually get it to recover and boot up again because of this immutability as a kind of characteristic of it. So do stick around, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see that. And if you like these kind of videos, do give this one a thumbs up and watch out for that next one. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.